to the next wide receiver off the board. It was Jerry Judy to the Denver Broncos at the 15th overall pick. Absolute steal. Absolute steal for Denver. I think they were one of the teams we all had circled to go out and get a wide receiver in this draft. With the Jets picking in front of them, with the 49ers originally having a pick in front of them before they traded back, and the Raiders, I don't think that the Broncos saw any chance uh, to get Jerry Judy barring them trading up themselves. And they were able to sit back and get an incredibly talented wide receiver out of Alabama. I love the talent of Jerry Judy. I'm still 50-50 on the landing spot. I certainly think there's Mm -hmm. opportunity um, opposite Cortland Sutton in this offense. I I just don't know that there's going to be enough to go around. Last season, we really saw Drew Locke show some upside. Towards the end, he got five starts there. And if Drew Locke is going to be the guy, I certainly think Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy can both be fantasy relevant. But to me, like Sutton is going to be a lock for his 125 targets. Noah Fant is a really hot name as a breakout at the tight end position, and I see him getting close to 90 targets this year. So wow. just knowing that there's not going to be a ton of volume in this offense from a passing perspective, I mean, they just brought in Melvin Gordon to go along Philip Lindsay. So they've got weapons everywhere. Just knowing that they're not going to be throwing the ball 600 times um, this season, I, I kind of question whether Judy's going to be incredibly – fantasy relevant this year i actually do have him as a wide receiver three i think he's gonna creep close to that hundred target mark just because denver is so desperate for that wide receiver two spot to be filled alongside of Cortland sutton they actually went out and got kj hamler as well in round two which we're going to talk about um, on another podcast but i have judy right around the emmanuel sanders anthony miller jamison crowder range guys that you can put in your flex week to week and expect maybe 15 points maybe you're just spot starting them during bye weeks but that's kind of the area i have judy in for this season i certainly am a big fan of him in dynasty because he's got a great young core on this offense to go around with drew lock Cortland sutton noah fan um so so that's my take on judy i certainly i think drew lock was um, already in a prime position to break out this season and that's going to do nothing but help him i actually am worried that his adp is going to fly up now because they went out and got him so many weapons. So, you know, that's that's how I see Judy kind of working into this offense. I, I'm a little bit just ever so slightly less bullish on Noah Fant. I, I really think when it was just Sutton and Noah Fant in this offense, the, the ceiling was astronomical for Fant. This might cap that a little right. bit, but I, but I do really like him as a sleeper candidate at the tight end spot. I don't think Sutton is going to be affected at all. Steph, I know I just broke down a lot there for this Denver offense. <laughs> um, what are your takes? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think Judy's going to be more involved than I do? Yeah, just like you, I see that some late round appeal and redraft as a flex for Judy. Really, to me, it comes down to, do you believe this Broncos offense has it? I mean, if, if Judy went to the Raiders, I think he would be far and away. Like, we might even have him at wide receiver two range just because of all that opportunity and making him really the de facto one there. Like, yeah, the landing spot, man, it's kind of gross. But Judy's the most complete and well-rounded wide receiver in this draft. Uh, I think he passed everybody's eye test, and his measurables say the same as well. He has elite speed, great route running, great hands. What could really make Judy a star to me is Pat Schumer. You know, the, the Broncos brought him in as their offensive coordinator. And Schumer loves to play action pass, and he's shown to be great at developing young quarterbacks. He was with Sam Bradford at the start of his career when he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. He coached a second-year Nick Foles back with the Eagles into an absolute beast in 2013 when he threw 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. He helped Case Keenum uh, be fantastic when he took over for the the Vikings back in 2017. So if you believe in Schumer and you believe in Drew Locke, you believe in the Broncos' offense— yeah, why not take a shot on Jerry Judy? I believe he's a great player. I think we all do. And he'll definitely command some volume. Uh, I think even going into year two and three of his career, he could even pass Sutton as the one wow. there in Denver. I know that's a hot take. And I love Sutton. Uh, but just Judy is such a complete prospect. you got to love him here. Uh, definitely worth taking a shot on the later rounds, mid rounds of your draft. Steph, is it? Schumer or Shermer? <laughs> it, it's Shermer. My bad on that one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say it's Schumer, though. Yeah, hey, I mean, maybe it's his his evil twin brother um, or something like that. I don't know. But, no, I think you bring up a great point. There's a lot of turnover in the NFL with some of these coordinators and things like that that people don't realize. Maybe, actually, certainly, a guy I'm going to talk about later is Gary Kubiak with the Vikings, and he's going to be their new offensive coordinator and play caller. So a little plug there for, for later on in the pod, but – 
a lot of offenses can have some pretty big changes year over year just because of play caller changes, just because of coordinator changes. So knowing that that Shermer is coming into this offense, uh, given the credentials that you just laid out, I think it could be big for Drew Locke and for everybody. So I love that, and I certainly am excited for this Broncos team. They're one team that I could see – you know, piecing it together and making a wild card run. Maybe they finish close to double digit wins. Maybe they get to nine and seven. But I could also see the see the wheels coming off and them picking um, pretty early in the draft <laughs> next season. So we'll see. Yeah, it could be one of those things like like almost like Trubisky, where if things start to go south, they're like, get Drew Log out of here. Five games is just it's not enough. It's such a rough sample size to go into this season with. 